just had a period where we remember the fall of the Second World War um, and Remembrance Sunday, but nobody tells us this story except you tonight. Very personal, <laughs> very informative, and I certainly really, one of the questions that came to my mind, was what happened to little boy and his younger sister? What happened to little boy and his younger sister? What happened to little boy and his younger sister? Well, Mum wasn't an orphan, she had to leave her family in Poland. She was taken away by mistake, because she went on holiday to eastern Poland um, in August 1939, and the Bolsheviks came when she was on holiday, and she never got home again. She was only 12. And so they came with knives and guns in the night, and she was staying with a family, and she was swept away in that thing, with the family, who were just strangers, really. And she said that in the night when they came, it was a beautiful house where she was staying with family silver. The, the, you know, the family had been there for centuries, portraits on the walls, and they all had to leave it. And these Bolsheviks were very rough people. And they said it was in the... In some, and, she, and, uh, and they said, put them on cattle trucks, and that was mum gone. Immediately, Sikorsky seeks the release of 114,000 Polish soldiers taken prisoner by the Russians in 1939. He asks Stalin to form them into a Polish army to fight alongside the Allies. He agrees to Sikorsky's suggestion, anything to resist the overwhelming Nazi war machine. Sikorsky flies to Russia via North Africa. He manages to convince Stalin to free the remaining Polish soldiers. Still, as events later prove, Sikorsky's diplomacy has saved countless lives. Quite a bossy person. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this scares me off Facebook. This is a little beautiful, a beautiful little box. Have a look at this. It's gilded. That's from India as well. That was Mum's. She used to keep her beads in that. She was very, very meticulous. This is um, a little god with four arms. No, a goddess with four arms. Have a look at that. That's ivory that Mum brought back with her. Um, here's, I keep these on my dressing table, they're very precious. This is another beautiful goddess with four arms. You're not allowed to make things out of ivory, are you? But Mum did have these things. And she's got her beautiful hair all the way down her back. And she's rising out of a lotus flower. So have a look at that. So those are Mum's beautiful things from India. She did have another thing, which was a tiny seed the size of my fingernail. It was a red seed, and inside the seed, there were ten ivory elephants. Imagine that. And I was, I was my mum's third child, and I, nearly, I was very ill when I was little, because mum really went through such a lot of starvation. She wasn't really strong enough to have children, and the one after me, my little sister, actually didn't survive. So that was mum. But when I was little, I kept being ill. And one day when I was four, mum got this ten ivory elephants out of this little seed and showed me and cheered me up. And I was so excited, I went to her drawer and took them for myself and scattered them everywhere and that's the elephant's gone. <laughs> so the elephants never made it. Yeah, no, no, they just vanished on the floor. Don't show a child magic elephants. <laughs> but, for example, I, I mustn't do this because we all need cake, but I just want to show you, and I'll do a, a simple train. Sir, translation, okay. 16th of August, Friday. I'm in hospital again. Is no spitalu. Boli mnie głowa. My head hurts. Mam temperatura. I've got a temperature. Jak to zwyczajnie w szpitalu? Well, as you would expect, I'm in the hospital. Dziś po południe Veronia przyszła, przyniosła mi list z domu. This afternoon, Veronica brought me a letter from home, because her family had stayed at home in Poland. List z Polski. O Boże. She's 19 when she's writing this. A letter from Poland. Oh, God. Teraz czuję się lepiej niż rano i mogę trochę pomyśleć nad nim. Now I feel a bit better than I did this morning and I can think a little bit about it. Długi list pisane przez Stefka. That's her older brother. A long letter written by my oldest brother, Stefan. Dostałam również adres Ed Edka do Belgii. And I got Eddie's address, that was her little brother, who is in Belgium. Napiszę do Edka, może, może otrzymam odpowiedź. I'll write to him, maybe I'll get a reply. Może będę się mogła skomunikować z nim. Maybe I'll be able to communicate with him. Boże, ja tak tego pragnę. Oh God, I wish so much I could. Jakżeż by to było dobrze, gdybym wiedziała. Wouldn't it be good if I knew, że tam za granicą mam kogoś bliskiego. But somewhere over the sea, I've got one of my family. Że tam, tam mam brata, that my brother's there. A może Bóg będzie taki łaskawy dla mnie. Maybe God will be good enough for me. But so gracious as to give me that. Tyle, tyle łask Stwórca już okazał naszej rodzinie. The Creator has given so much, showed so much grace to my family. Dziś, gdy naprawdę mało jest rodzin, których członek nie padłby ofiarą wojny. Today, when there are really so few families that, where someone hasn't died in this war, właśnie moja rodzina należy do tych wyjątków. My family is one of those exceptions. So it goes on. There's a bit of a, a story in this diary. The girls were in Valley Val, they were given the addresses of soldiers to write to. So there's a lot of pen palling going on, and, and Mum is, of course, 19. And, um, but also, 
there's a whole there's a whole life there in India which we heard of as children. And I, I really just want to say thank you again because I know everybody already has. But to say that I'm amazed that anybody is talking about this Indian experience and that there's you know talk in Poland about it because we really thought when we were growing up that nobody knew or cared. And it was the British. It was the British Empire, it was the good British people, and it was that Maharaja who was so, such a great, such a, you know, a very astonishingly good person to provide a home for a thousand Polish girls. And out of those girls have come so many families, we know so many of them, and they've all had children and their children have had children. So that man did a lot for Poland. So yeah. I think, I hope he's in heaven. He certainly deserves to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just had a period where we remember for the Second World War and, and Remembrance Sunday, but nobody tells us this story except you tonight. Well, mine was very brief, and I wrote a lot of notes. I'm sorry, Alan, but you could look at it. Well, it was, it, was, it was very personal, <laughs> very informative, and I certainly really one of the questions that came to my mind was what happened to a little boy and his younger sister? Yes, yes. I mean this is heartbreaking when you, yeah. when, when you see something like that, and that's a true story. Yes I know, but, but one wonders like what, what happens what happens to them yes. later. What happens to them? I'm not sure, Sophia, I'm not sure. Maybe Zanka knows it, but uh, she's, she's an encyclopedia of... Uh, <laughs> well, really it's been very informative for me. I've loved listening to Thank it. You Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. <laughs> you were responsible for this. Oh, I just did. Oh, 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 about um, people who were taken from Persia to Siberia um, and then went on to other places. You can Google Cressy Siberia mm. and thousands of stories are there Fantastic. and some photos and the history if you want to find out more. Norma Davies is involved with that as well. Uh, a man who went to Australia set up the um, wonderful website which they call the Virtual Museum and um, you'd be astounded just how much there is there. Um, unfortunately, many people in Poland have been rather brainwashed by the Russians and do not believe that Poles were taken to Siberia. Um, I've heard of stories of children saying something that they'd heard, or beating something that they'd heard from relatives, say in England or America, to their teacher and being punished for it because they deny it. So, there's still a lot of acknowledgement that it's needed. Okay, well thank you very much for your wonderful story as well and for the city. And I just want to say that I still do not know the mystery of how my mother, who was in Balibado camp, how she ever bought a sewing machine, a second-hand sewing machine, all the way from Balibado, where she learned sewing and pattern making. She brought it all the way to Fairford Camp in Gloucestershire. I have no idea how she did it, and it is my family heirloom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I think we've we managed to get three talks out of one, one evening. And we'll, we'll have the caretaker throwing us out. You know, Russian boy your cards, Russian your cake, have lots to drink, and, and, and look at all the pictures. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all for coming.